Welcome back, friends. So we got so many questions after this last video we put out of how we chose our business name. So in today's video, we're basically gonna answer that. And we're gonna give you five tips that'll help in determining your own business name. We're Jenny and Davis. We fly through hurricanes for research and build furniture for fun. A while ago, we came up with a business plan to sell quality furniture, which brings people together. Follow along as we build our business empire. Empire? Yes, Jenny, big goals. Okay, we're starting an empire. Maybe one day it'll span beyond the garage. So a little while ago, we realized that we had a problem. And the problem was our business name, it was witty, it was relatable to us, but it was super hard for people to say. So for those of you who don't know, we used to be called White Grain Woodworking. That was our business name, that was our YouTube channel name, it was everything. But the big problem with that is people had a hard time remembering our name. Not only clients, but like friends and family. We would get, oh, you're, you're white woodworking. Oh, you're um, something grain woodworking. But nobody would ever say it correctly all the way through. So if our friends and family couldn't even say it right, we knew that people could not type it properly into a browser and find us. So we knew we needed to make a change. So we didn't have a business name, but we decided to rebrand the YouTube channel as just Jenny and Davis, because that's what a lot of other famous YouTubers were doing, was just using their names. Because we wanted the YouTube channel to be more of a documentary of us just going through life and accomplishing certain goals than 100% woodworking business all the time. So we were a little worried about everybody's reactions when we switched the YouTube channel over to Jenny and Davis, but everything went great. You guys reacted awesome to it. We really didn't lose any subscribers because of it. Well, no more than usual anyways. But the whole process went really well. But we were still left with nowhere to go with our business. Didn't have a name, didn't have an identity, nothing. We were lost, overwhelmed, cold, hungry, anxious, thirsty, sad, business nameless people. But amongst all that, we were doing something so much worse than just not having a business name that we didn't even know was going on. We'll get to that later. So now we're just gonna walk you through the entire process that we went through. So at this time, we were starting our new Air Force jobs. We were leaving our old ones. We weren't really building anything because we didn't have time. We were busy training. So we figured it was a really good time to finally sit down and really come up with a good business name for ourselves. So first we had to come up with a business identity. So your business name does so much for you in the way of like marketing and explaining who you are to potential clients and what you do that we had to figure out what did we want to convey? Like what, what did we want to tell people we did? What were we the experts in? Why should they choose us? We wanted it to sound cool. We were trying to picture it on like billboards and stickers. Like, I don't know what makes it look cool. What draws people's eyeballs to it and, and makes them feel like comfortable enough and convinced enough that you're worth typing into a search engine somewhere and figuring out who you are. Because your business name is your first impression, like, and you only get one shot at first impressions. So your business identity isn't so much so like what you build, it's how you want to portray yourself to other people. And there is a slight difference there. And if you're curious what that difference is, we go over it in depth in our marketing program. And in that program, you'll also get a ton of marketing tips. Like to be completely honest with you, that's our game plan for getting started here in Houston. So if you want that type of information, how to reach out to people, get the marketing program. It's a 100% money back guarantee. You have nothing to lose, so you need to check it out. So step two, after you've decided what your business identity is, you need to pick a name that correlates with that business identity. And most importantly, you need to see if it's even available. Are your domain names available, your email addresses, website names, social media accounts, all of that good stuff. You don't wanna put in all this time and effort into your name just to find out that it's already taken and you can't even get a website name that you like. And we say this from experience because when we were going through this exact same process to get our business name, we were like, oh, what if we called it Kerf? 
like K-E-R-F. So we thought that was a really cool name, but as soon as we typed that in to see if there were any domain names available, social media accounts, all of it was taken. Somebody had the great idea before us somewhere in Oregon and all of the domain names were taken, social media handles, you name it not available. We were stuck on this step for a few months. We went back and forth so many times. And this is a step where a lot of people do give up and get really frustrated because it is hard. And this part might sting for some of you. This is the point where some people take the lazy way out and say, I don't want to spend any time finding something that works, so I'm just going to change my name to Woodworks with a Z or keep changing letters until I finally find a domain name that's actually available. And while Yes, you found yourself a domain name that's available and it's kind of related to woodworking. You also get back into that realm of being a little confusing. People don't know what your name is. Is, is it with an S? Is it, is it with a Z? Does it have two X's? Is there an underscore or a period dot X? Yes, you made it easy on yourself short term, but you're making it really difficult on your customers long term to find you. So check availability before you spend too much time on it and definitely before you spend any money on it. So step three, this is the happy step. You've found a name that you like, you've seen that all the domains are available for it, your social media handles are good to go, but you're not done. This video is five steps, not three. So don't think we're letting you off easy. But now what you need to do is test it out. Tell it to people, get a feel for if others like it, if it's catchy. Try to like feel the vibe of people's reactions once you tell them what your name is. And if you really wanna go intense, like strategic. You can even tell your friends that that's the name of like your buddy's woodworking business and get their very organic opinion on the name because if they know it's your name, they might try to be nice to you or they don't want to like let you down. You know, they'll just pat you on the head and say, yeah, that's a great name. Good job. Meanwhile, they kind of think it's stupid, but they just don't want to hurt your feelings. So let me tell you about how our step three went. We were in love with the name Sweet Sapwood. We were moving to the south. We thought it would be adorable if we had the word sweet in there. Sapwood just sounded kind of sweet and quirky. Anyways, that was gonna be our name. And we decided to test it out on somebody we knew. He was like a crusty old tech sergeant in the Air Force. Great guy, would just tell you how it is. Doesn't care if he's friends with you or not. You are getting that man's honest opinion. So we ran it by him and his response was, Sweet Sapwood, that sounds sticky. We're like, well, yeah, sap, sap is usually sticky. He's like, no, it makes me think of a sticky tabletop. You don't want your customers thinking that they're gonna get a nasty, sticky tabletop. Oh my gosh, you're so right. And I never would have thought of that because I was way too biased to the fact that I loved the name and I thought it was gonna be cute and adorable and fit in with the South really well. Meanwhile, everybody's like, ew, that sounds sticky. Never would have known unless I ran it past this guy first. And you might not think stuff like that matters, but let me tell you, it matters. But that's some explanation that some psychology person on YouTube can make a video on for later. That's not our job. Just trust us. All right, so number four is your logo. This is gonna be plastered everywhere. It's gonna be on your boxes and your packaging and your website, on a billboard, and you need to know that it looks good at all different sizes. 100 miles away on a billboard and it's really teeny tiny, can people recognize it? On your packaging, when it's in your face, is it clear and visible and easy to see? Does it look good on multiple different color backgrounds? If you're gonna have it printed on t-shirts, how many different colors of t-shirt are you gonna have? You don't wanna to put too many constraints on your logo for what color it has to be on or what size it needs to be. It needs to work at all sizes on all colors. So usually that means one or two different colors, usually black or white, and you wanna make sure that it's scalable to different sizes. It also needs to relate to your business name. It needs to be something recognizable. You're probably not gonna make this yourself uh, unless you're just good in Photoshop or Illustrator, but if you're gonna outsource it to a service like Fiverr or Upwork where somebody can make it for you, you don't need to be a graphic designer, but you need to be very clear about what you're asking for or you're gonna get a lot of trash back and you're just not gonna like anything. So when you're writing up your commission or whatever for your logo, start to put some of those things in there. I want it one or two colors. I want it scalable. I want it to look good at all sizes, stuff like that. 
All right, so the moment you've all been waiting for, our company name is Samara Table Company. We'll just walk you through the five steps. And tell you exactly why we chose that name. So number one, our business identity, we wanna be known for kitchen tables. I think that's gonna be our hallmark product. It's gonna be the best profit margin. It's Essentially, that's what we would like to build most of. Our main goal for our business is to build furniture that brings people together. So whatever that looks like, that's what we'll build. But we wanna be portrayed as a table company. I hope that makes sense. It's just, you're just separating the idea of what you build from what you're known for. And those are two completely independent things. So number two is pretty easy for us. We found that Smart Table Company was available on all, all domain names. All the social media handles were available. So that was kind of an easy win for us. Another thing that we wanted to look into was we wanted to make sure that we weren't uh, competing with anybody in the state mm -hmm. for our LLC. So we had to check with the state of Texas and make sure that nobody had that business name registered as an LLC or something similar to it. And lucky for us, nobody did. And we tested this out with our friends and they really liked it and always got an, ooh, what does that mean? Or what is that for? People right. always remembered it. They didn't have trouble pronouncing it. And then with our logo, so this kind of gets into why we chose the name Samara. Um, Jen and I love aviation, we're in the Air Force, we like to fly. Yeah, our other job literally is flying. Right, so we wanted to have something related to aviation. We're also on a huge kick for growth mindset. Running a business, growing as people, helping each other. Yep. The whole growth mindset concept. So if you haven't noticed, we have like a lot of plants and greenery in our new studio. We wanted to incorporate a lot of that into who we are and our identity. So the Samara is the little helicopter things from maple trees that you see. So it's related to trees. And it's related to flying because I fly off the little trees. Ooh. Just like that. They fly. So it just checked all the boxes for us. It was something sort of obscure that people don't really know what it is, which yeah. is what you want. You don't want something that's instantly recognizable and your search results are gonna be saturated with a ton of stuff mm -hmm. that's not you. Which leads us to step five. Business names are not important. Jenny talked about earlier something we were doing that was way more dangerous than having no business name. And that's the fact that we were letting a business name stop us from starting our business. Yes. It got to the point where we were like losing time where we could have been making checklists, doing prototypes, stuff like that because we were so hung up on the stupid name. I got some proof for you right here. What is a Starbuck? Does anybody understand what a Starbuck is? And why is a mermaid on a cup of coffee? Names do not matter. Brand recognition matters, yes. your brand matters, your marketing matters, but what your name is and what it means at the end of the day doesn't matter. And I know that's crazy because we just spent seven to eight minutes mm -hmm. talking at you about how important all these steps are, but that's just to get you going, guys, really. Right. If the name is keeping you from getting started, then the name is not that important. But if you're taking the appropriate amount of time to do your research and find yourself a good name and then immediately getting started and making progress after finding it, then yes, your name is important. Because you can always change your name. Sometimes it's advantageous. A ton of airlines in the past have gone bankrupt under one name, rebranded, and then all of a sudden they shot off because everybody thought it was a new airline. You see companies do this all the time. So you're never too stuck to a name that you can't rebrand later. Mm -hmm. So don't feel bad if you're stuck with a bad name. Just keep doing what you're doing. And then when you have time, you can go back and rebrand. It's not the end of the world if you pick a bad name. I guess that's all that we're saying for step number five is don't get too invested in it that you make it a stumbling point for actually making progress in your yes. business. So that's pretty much it. I hope our tips were helpful for you. Let us know down in the comments uh, what your business name is or what you're thinking about calling your business. Again, if you're interested in the step-by-step -step process of determining your business identity, we got links to that below the like button uh, in the description. You can buy our course there. Again, money back guarantee. You literally have nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. So we hope that answers your questions. We thought it was so fun that everybody was so curious after we released our business name, like, why'd you pick Samara Table Company? Why this, why that? Can you tell me why you said Table Company? Why Samara? So it was kind of fun for us to be able to sit here and, and like tell you exactly why we chose it because it was kind of a fun process for us. So subscribe so you don't miss any new videos coming out and uh, we'll see you in the next one.